Now what I'm going to show you here is a solution to uh, quite a common problem. Uh, ideally I would like to reduce the exposure in the sky to bring out some more detail um, by about uh, half a stop. That shows more detail in the sky but because I've got the shadows and the highlights set here I can see that I'm getting some warnings down here that this area down here is being blocked out and again you can see from the histogram that uh, this area is being blocked out and is uh, showing no dynamic range down here. So the way around this problem is to actually create two raw conversions and then combine them in layers, uh, one for the sky, uh, one for the, uh, for the ground land area, uh, to bring out the best of, of both areas. So I'm going to show you how to do this. As I say, I want to uh, change the exposure here and I'm just going to ignore the fact that I'm blocking out the uh, uh, the undergrowth here. And I'm going to open that into the uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, work area and then save that away as a JPEG. And what I'm then going to do is reopen the, uh, the, the raw file again and uh, then do a conversion uh, for the land area and save that away as another JPEG. And then I'll show you a rather nice way of combining the two layers to produce one image. Here we go, it takes a little bit of time to do this, quite a lot of data. So what I'm going to do is now save this away as an A file. So I do a save as For the purposes of this, I'm just going to call it 2028A. And probably just keep to the 10 value for the, uh, for the quality. Okay, and we can see in the tray at the bottom on the left hand side here, we can see that the photograph A is available. So I'm now going to open the raw file again. And as you can see, I really want to brighten this up a bit. Maybe give it oh, nearly two stops, one, 1 1.8 stops to actually brighten the foreground area up. And as you can see from the, uh, the warnings here, I'm actually burning the clouds out by doing that. I'm also, because it's a shadow area, I'm actually going to take the shadow area and give that a bit of a boost as well. So you can now see much more detail in this area here and I'm going to open that into the Photoshop area. And I'm now going to save this in the same place. And I'm going to call that one B. Okay, so B has got the land area in it, and A has the sky detail in area in it. So this is the good bit. Okay, what you need to do is actually set the two photographs up so that you can see them side by side. So slight bit of adjustment here. Just move those around. Be 
because what I want to do is make a selection around the sky area in this one here and drop it into this photograph here so that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the uh, the lasso tool so this is just the standard lasso here I'm going to set the feather radius to be about 200 pixels which gives a nice um, even transform between one photograph and the next I'm going to make a fairly rough selection around this area here right the way around the top of the photo and then back to the beginning and what we should then get is the uh, the marching ants to show the uh, selection there they go now I'm going to go back to the move tool put my finger on the shift key and I'm going to shift this one here into the other photograph and release now you see two things happening here one is that uh, you're getting the big thumbnail here which is now showing the uh, interesting effect here just line the two up so what I've got now is the sky essentially from the first photograph and the foreground area from the second photograph and if I just go up to layer flatten image it then becomes a single photograph and I think that's uh, quite a lot better than the original